So we went to Battle and Brew for one heck of a battle and some really tasty brews. We made a video a few months ago. Actually, it was like in 2017. It was quite a while ago. The events manager sent us an email and was like, oh, we really like your video. Thanks for doing it. And let us know if you're coming back. Your friend, Larry, shout out to Larry. Uh, <laughs> he invited us to go to the um, Atlanta Rain Overwatch competition and uh, Battle and Brew was going to be like hosting like the like an event for it. And it was wild. Yeah, so crazy. So many people were there. Ah, oh, so many. You know what? Let's just show them. Okay. That's what we're saying. Just, just people everywhere. ATL. Supposedly there's a slogan that our team has. Uh, let's go, dude. I'm not super uh, aware of Overwatch's culture, especially as far as esports goes. So that may not even be just their slogan. It may actually be something encompassing Overwatch completely. And I just don't know. I'm not sure. But a lot of the, a lot of the people in there were screaming out, "Let's go, dude!" And so I just, I tried. It, it, it wasn't. My let's go dude wasn't so good, but that's okay. That's okay. I still had a really good time. Really, really cool watching our, watching the teams battle it out. It's like individual states now. It's almost like a football team or a basketball team where different cities, Atlanta, San Francisco, like Dallas or Houston, yeah, you know, no, like no, no, every, right, Dallas. yeah, every uh, city has a esports game or esports team now. And like that's so cool. And then like just seeing all of the people like be so hype about it. I don't go to like, football and basketball events like at bars often, but the times that I've seen like you know, I haven't been for a Super Bowl. Not that this was even a Super Bowl. This was the opening game. Yeah. The amount of enthusiasm was crazy. And it just it felt good being in the environment. Like I didn't feel like anybody was pissed after the after of course because we won so i went to a ufc fight and the ufc fight that i went and saw was conor mcgregor versus khabib Nurmagomedov. i hope i didn't butcher your last name sir because you jacked up conor <laughs> mcgregor and i'd rather not be the one in that chokehold because it was serious everyone thought conor was going to win it i thought conor was going to win it i didn't want him to win it i didn't want him to win it but it he ended up not winning it and that was a huge upset and people were pissed people were ready to fight then and there mm over someone else's loss. I know there were some Florida guys, because uh, it was Atlanta Rain versus the Florida something, and we won it. And I know there's some Florida guys there. They seemed chill. They seemed like they, they just generally realized they got that SmackDown laid. It was a competition. There's a tournament being held. They lost. We won. They're moving on. Yeah. It, and we were, and it was awesome. It was awesome watching it. Almost made you really, well, it didn't make me want to go play real bad. Of course, I didn't go play real bad because you, quickly will realize these guys are in a totally different league than you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, plus the coordination, the team management, the way that some of these players are like the top in their class for these things. They're definitely athletes in my book. If, even though they're not using uh, their muscles, 
they're still using that brain power and they're still using their creativity and they're still having to figure out how to win over someone else, over another human being. And if that's not what being an athlete is, we may need to relook at what an athlete truly is. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be physical. It's just really cool seeing how the esports arena has really developed and how people are really excited about it too. Mm -hmm. Now let's bring it back to Battle and Brew. Because that was the venue for this entire, you know, tournament uh, viewing experience that we got to have. Yes. Every chair in the house was full. Every couch, every TV, every every bar stool. Standing room only. Like, the bar was, like, three lines deep. I've never, I've never seen Battle and Brew like this before. Not and even half been, of that. I've been four, maybe five times. This may be our sixth time going. Sixth mm -hmm. time going. Wow. They managed it, to me, very well. Mm -hmm. They, it was a very well put together uh, event. I really... Their, their waitresses, the bartenders, they were on it mm -hmm. as best they could. Yeah. Because this was, un to me, it seemed like it was unprecedented. This wasn't something that they do often. But with what I saw and what we experienced, getting our food, getting drinks, they did their damn thing. Speaking of drinks, I tried the Rainbow Dash. <laughs> it was so cute. The Rainbow Dash was really tasty. It had like cotton candy on it and like a sour rainbow thing. So good. Also too, like they've remodeled a little bit. Mm. So since the last time we were there, they um, like kind of built a new area like with some TVs. Mm -hmm. It looks like they've built some more TVs and like a nicer lounging area. Like, yeah. oh man, if I could reserve that back area. Mm -hmm. Ooh. They also added some arcade games because those weren't there last time we were there. Uh, I don't know if they were there or if I just didn't notice them when I was walking past. They seemed like there was some retro things that were maybe getting ready to try and add. I approve. Please bring back the arcade. Um, I got a couple of things I want to add. A initial D, of, please. You, you, you know, you can't. If you can't, you can just put a little initial D cabinet in there. You know, just <laughs> nah, not asking for too much. You know, I got my card. I got my card. I'm ready. So they have a really good selection of food. You had the chicken tenders. It was they're... like dragon something. Yeah, and they're all named pretty cool too. I was really sad that they don't have hot wings because I'm a hot wing fanatic, but this definitely hit the spot. If you're mm -hmm. trying to get something spicy with some hot sauce on it, chicken was fantastic. Yeah, and they also have a couple of like vegetarian and vegan options. Mm -hmm. I had some teriyaki stir fry. Yeah, it was. That was good. I it took was... it home too because you couldn't eat it all. Yeah, it was a lot. And they also have like hummus too. And of course they have great finger foods for gamers, so mm -hmm. that's awesome. And also too, since the last time we've been there, they've extended their hours. So when we were there last time, they only opened at 5 p.m. But now they open earlier. I'll have to put the hours down in the description box because I don't know off the top of my head. And they are letting kids come in too. Which is awesome. Getting to, hopefully I'm gonna be able to bring my nephew there because he's becoming a game fanatic himself, of course. Fortnite, but I think be having him in that environment, kind of seeing that there's other kids like him and that there's adults and that it's uh, that he needs to really hone those skills and get better because there's a there's a real avenue for success through video games. Battle and Brew, it's it's where you want to be. Yeah, definitely a cool spot for gamers and non-gamers alike. There's plenty of things to do either way. So we love Battle and Brew. Thanks so much for inviting us out and we hope you guys go check it out yourselves. Absolutely. As always, you guys, this has been an R Green Branch video. I am Touchard. And I'm Ariel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. We hopefully will see you guys in the next one. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell because all those things are important. Yeah. And comment down below. We'll catch you guys later.